Part 1 Introduction to Organizational Behavior Chapter 2 The Changing Environment of Organizations Overview The environment of all organizations is changing at an unprecedented rate. People work in different ways and places than in the past. The workplace is increasingly diverse, ethical challenges are a constant issue, and globalization is commonplace. Understanding and addressing the environment of a business has traditionally been the purview of top managers. But the effects of today's changing environment permeate the entire organization. Hence, to truly understand the behavior of people in organizational settings, it is also necessary to understand the changing environment of business. We introduce and examine five of the central environmental forces for change faced by today's organizations, diversity, globalization, technology, ethics and corporate governance, and new employment relationships. An understanding of these forces will then set the stage for our in-depth discussion of contemporary organizational behavior. 1. Describe the nature of diversity in organizations. 2. Describe the different types of diversity and barriers to inclusion that exist in the workplace. 3. Discuss the emergence of globalization and cross-cultural differences and similarities. 4. Discuss the changing nature of technology and its impact on business. 5. Describe emerging perspectives on ethics and corporate governance. 6. Discuss the key issues in new employment relationships. Rate our world challenge, global diversity at Coca-Cola. Summary, with over 130,000 global employees, over 65,000 of them in the U.S., beverage giant the Coca-Cola Company is a global business that operates in a multicultural world both in the workplace and in the marketplace. The company recognizes that its ability to thrive in a multicultural world is both critical to its financial performance and consistent with its values. Accordingly, diversity is recognized by Coca-Cola as an important component of their vision for the company in 2020. The Coca-Cola company understands that although it has been recognized as a diversity leader there is always more it can do. Rate our world challenge, imagine that the company's leaders ask you for advice on how to build a diverse and inclusive workforce that allows it to leverage the potential of its diverse employees to enhance the company's performance. After reading this chapter, what would you tell them? Rate our world response. Senior executives including the chairman and CEO are involved with many nonprofits involving underrepresented groups, and corporate goals are linked to individuals' diversity metrics including being a cross-cultural mentor and the recruitment, promotion, engagement, and retention of diverse employees. The company also offers a variety of diversity education programs that have evolved from minimizing conflict to strengthening the company's ability to amplify, respect, value, and leverage employee differences to influence sustainable business outcomes. Rather than just focusing on diversity numbers, the Coca-Cola company focuses on fostering an inclusive culture using social psychology research on unconscious bias and change management techniques. Chapter Outline I Diversity and Business Diversity refers to the variety of observable and unobservable similarities and differences among people. Some differences, such as gender, race, and age, are often the first diversity characteristics to come to mind. But diversity is much more than demographics and can reflect combinations of characteristics rather than a single attribute. Each individual also has a variety of characteristics, and combinations of them can result in diversity. I. I Types of diversity and barriers to inclusion. A types of diversity. Surface level diversity refers to observable differences in people, including race, age, ethnicity, physical abilities, physical characteristics, and gender. Deep level diversity refers to individual differences that cannot be seen directly, including goals, values, personalities, decision making styles, knowledge, skills, abilities, and attitudes. Three other types of within group diversity reflect different types of deep level. Diversity Separation diversity refers to differences in position or opinion among group members, reflecting disagreement or opposition to similarity in an attitude or value, for example, especially with regard to group goals or processes. Variety diversity refers to differences in a certain type or category, including group members, expertise, knowledge, or functional background. 
Disparity diversity refers to differences in the concentration of valuable social assets or resources dissimilarity in rank, pay, decision-making authority, or status. For example, these are five types of diversity. B. Trends in diversity. Some short-term demographic trends are strong enough to suggest that the changing demographic mix in the workforce will continue to increase the importance of understanding and leveraging diversity. The Census Bureau projects that by 2020 the U.S. workforce will consist of 62.3% white non-Hispanics, 18.6% Hispanics, 12% blacks, and 5.7% Asians. Longer-term U.S. demographic projections further highlight the increasingly diverse character of the United States. The population is projected to become older. By 2050, the total population is forecasted to increase 49%. Non-Hispanic whites are expected to decrease from 69.4% to 50.1% of the total population by 2050. People of Hispanic origin is projected to increase 188% by 2050. The black population is projected to increase by 71% by 2050. The Asian population is forecasted to grow 213% by 2050. In 2014, only 23 of the Fortune 500 sales were minorities and white people held 87% of total seats on corporate boards of directors. Many countries and regions face talent shortages at all levels, and those gaps are expected to worsen. Talent shortages are forecast to rise globally. See Generational Differences Age-based diversity is a major issue facing many organizations today. Figure 2.2 provides a clear indicator of why this is true. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics projects a dramatic increase in workers age 65 and older during the next decade, while the percentage of younger workers is expected to decrease. Most experts characterize today's workforce as comprising for generations. According to date of birth, they are seniors 1922 to 1943 baby boomers 1943 to 1963 generation X 1964, 1980, and generation Y also referred to as the Millennial Generation 1980-2000. to 2000. The U.S. workforce is aging at the same time Generation Y, the largest generation since the baby boomers, is entering the workforce. This increases the importance of understanding the role of age in organizations, and how to manage generational differences at work. The influence of age in training environments has been extensively studied. Age was negatively associated with learning scores in an open learning program for managerial skills. Older trainees demonstrated lower motivation, reduced learning, and less post-training confidence in comparison to younger trainees. This suggests that age has a negative relationship with learning, and that part of its influence may be due to motivation. Increasing conscientiousness and knowledge counteract some of the negative effects of aging that result from reductions in information processing speed and motivation to learn. Some organizations are using reverse mentoring to bridge generational differences and transfer the technology skills younger workers bring to the workplace to more senior employees. D. Diversity issues for managers. Why should we care about diversity? As managers, diversity awareness will enable us to hire, retain, and engage the best talent, which will help to maximize the organization's performance. Diversity also fosters greater creativity and innovation. 1. The business case for diversity. One reason that organizations should promote diversity is performance. Recent research has found that firm performance increases when employees have more positive attitudes toward diversity. Diversity contributes to a firm's competitive advantage when it enables all employees to contribute their full talents and motivation to the company. Diversity management is also important for legal reasons. The Civil Rights Act of 1991 allows monetary damages in cases of intentional employment discrimination. Obeying the law and promoting diversity is consistent with hiring the people best suited for the job and organization. 2. Barriers to inclusion. Given both the performance benefits and legal imperatives of diversity, then, what prevents? Companies from becoming inclusive and making the most of their diversity. The report of the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission identified several common diversity barriers that exist in many organizations. These barriers, 
Summarize in Table 2.2. Stem from a variety of decision-making and psychological factors as well as from employees. Unawareness. Understanding and proactively addressing the barriers can minimize their impact and enhance inclusion. 8. The light me divided by bias. Consciously or unconsciously, we tend to associate with others whom we perceive to be like ourselves. This bias is part of human nature. Be stereotypes. The stereotype is a belief about an individual or a group based on the idea that everyone in that particular group will behave the same way. Stereotypes are harmful because they result in judgments about an individual based solely on his or her being part of a particular group, regardless of his or her unique identity. Stereotypes are often negative and erroneous, and thus adversely affect the targeted individuals. See Prejudice even if an organization has a strong commitment to inclusion, it is possible that the beliefs and actions of individual employees or managers are inconsistent with the organization's policies and values. The perceived threat of loss. As voluntary efforts are made by companies to promote inclusion, members of groups who traditionally have been the predominant employees of a particular workforce or occupation may grow anxious or angry if they perceive a direct threat to their own career opportunities, they may feel that they need to protect their own prospects by impeding the prospects of others. The ethnocentrism. Ethnocentrism reflects the belief that one's own language, native country, and cultural rules and norms are superior to all others. Ethnocentrism often has less to do with prejudice and more to do with inexperience or ignorance about other people and environments. F unequal access to organizational networks. All organizations have formal and informal networks. These organizational networks influence knowledge sharing, resource accessibility, and work opportunities. Women and minorities are often excluded from informal organizational networks, which can be important to job performance, mentoring opportunities, and being seen as a candidate for promotion. 3. Managing Diversity the most important element in effectively leveraging the positive potential of diversity is top management support for diversity and for diversity initiatives. An inclusive environment is created when all employees' cultural awareness and empathy are enhanced through diversity training and all employees are given equal access to mentors and other influential company employees. Creating fair company policies and practices that give all employees equal access to performance feedback training and development, and advancement opportunities is also critical. Diversity initiatives are more successful when a company is able to keep employees thinking about diversity issues, even when they do not feel a direct negative impact. Training and mentoring can also help. Diversity training and diversity education need to communicate that bias is a part of being human. It is not realistic to claim or to pursue an I'm totally unbiased divided by stance with regard to diversity. Case study. Diversity at Webmans. Summary. East Coast Grocer Webmans views diversity as more than just a legal or moral obligation or business necessity to them. It is a business opportunity. The company strives to attract and retain a workforce that reflects different backgrounds, experiences, and viewpoints and mirrors the communities in which it operates. Webmans believes that to be a great place to shop, they must first be a great place to work. Webmans emphasizes diversity in hiring to refresh stores with new ideas, corporate values, including respect, caring, empowerment, and high standards have helped the company repeatedly appear. On Fortune's list of the 100 best companies to work for. 1. In what ways can diverse employees contribute to Webmans' business performance? Research finds that firm performance increases when employees have positive attitudes toward diversity. Diversity contributes to a firm's competitive advantage when it enables all employees to contribute their full talents and motivation to the company. Diverse groups can use their diverse backgrounds to develop a more comprehensive view of a problem and broader list of possible solutions. A broader social network of diverse employees also gives work groups and organizations access to a wider variety of information and expertise. Further, diversity can be a source of creativity and innovation that can create a competitive advantage. 2. 
What types of diversity do you think wetlands should focus on? Why? Wetlands should focus on deep level diversity which is individual differences that cannot be seen directly, including goals, values, personalities, decision making styles, knowledge, skills, abilities, and attitudes. These are visible divided by characteristics in others take more time to learn about, but can have stronger effects on group and organizational performance than surface level characteristics. 3. What are the downsides, if any, of building a diverse workforce? As employees, the better we are able to work with all types of people, the more effective we will be in our jobs. As managers, diversity awareness will enable us to hire, retain, and engage the best talent which will help to maximize the organization's performance. Diversity also fosters greater creativity and innovation. A strong business case can be made for diversity. Diversity management is also important for legal reasons. Laws prohibit employment discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. Other laws offer protections to additional groups, including employees with disabilities and workers over the age of 40. Obeying the law and promoting diversity is consistent with hiring the people best suited for the job and organization. There seem to be no downsides to building diversity into the workforce. I I I G L O D A L I C A I T O N and business. Another environmental factor that affects OB is globalization or the internationalization of business activities and the shift toward an integrated global economy. From a business standpoint the widespread effects of globalization are relatively new, at least in the United States. 8 Trends in Globalization In 2014, the volume of international trade in current dollars was about 50 times greater than the amount in 1960. For major factors account for much of the growth in international trade. First, communication and transportation have improved dramatically over the past several decades. It is simply easier to conduct international business today than was the case just a few years ago. Second, businesses have expanded internationally to increase their markets. Third, more and more firms are moving into international markets to control costs, especially to reduce labor costs. Finally, many organizations have become international in response to competition. If an organization starts gaining strength in international markets, its competitors often must follow suit to avoid falling too far behind in sales and profitability. Be cultural competence. One of the worst, yet easiest, mistakes people can make is to assume that other people are just like them. People from different cultures see and do things in different ways. Cultural competence is the ability to interact effectively with people of different cultures. There are four components of cultural competence. One awareness of our own cultural worldview, and of our reactions to people who are different. 2. Our attitude toward cultural differences. 3. Knowledge of different worldviews and cultural practices. 4. Cross-cultural skills. See cross-cultural differences and similarities. We now turn our attention to differences and similarities in behavior across cultures. 1. General observations. Cultural and national boundaries do not necessarily coincide. Given this basic assumption, one major review of the literature on international management reached five basic conclusions. First, behavior in organizational settings does indeed vary across cultures. Second, culture itself is one major cause of this variation. Culture is the set of shared values, often taken for granted, that help people in the group, organization, or society understand which actions are considered acceptable and which are deemed unacceptable. Third, although the causes and consequences of behavior within organizational settings remain quite diverse across cultures, organizations and the ways they are structured appear to be growing increasingly similar. Fourth, the same individual behaves differently in different cultural settings. Finally, cultural diversity can be an important source of synergy in enhancing organizational effectiveness. Global Issues, Cultural Etiquette Quiz, Specific Cultural Issues Geer Hofstad, a Dutch researcher, studied workers and managers in 60 countries and found that specific attitudes and behaviors differ significantly because of the values and beliefs that characterize those countries. 
The two primary dimensions that Hofstra found are the individualism slash collectivism, continuum and power distance. Individualism exists to the extent that people in a culture define themselves primarily as individuals rather than as part of one or more groups or organizations. Collectivism, on the other hand, is characterized by tight social frameworks in which people tend to base their identities on the group or organization to which they belong. Power distance which might also be called orientation to authority, is the extent to which people accept as normal an unequal distribution of power. Hosta also identified other dimensions of culture. Uncertainty avoidance, which might also be called preference for stability, is the extent to which people feel threatened by unknown situations and prefer to be in clear and unambiguous situations. Masculinity, which might be more accurately called assertiveness or materialism is the extent to which the dominant values in a society emphasize aggressiveness and the acquisition of money and other possessions as opposed to concern for people, relationships, among people, and overall quality of life. Hosta framework has recently been expanded to include long-term versus short-term orientation. Long-term values include focusing on the future, working on projects that have a distant payoff, persistence, and thrift. Short-term values are more oriented toward the past and the present and include respect for traditions and social obligations. The important issue to remember is that people from diverse cultures value things differently from each other and that people need to take these differences into account as they work. The global perspective The global perspective is distinguished by a willingness to be open to and learn from the alternative systems and meanings of other people and cultures, and a capacity to avoid Assuming that people everywhere are the same. Given globalization trends and the multicultural nature of the U.S. workforce, managers increasingly need a global perspective and a supportive set of skills and knowledge to be most effective. IV. Technology and business. Technology refers to the methods used to create products, including both physical goods and intangible services. Three specific areas of technology worth noting here are 1. The shift toward the service-based economy, 2. The growing use of technology for competitive advantage, and 3. Mushrooming change in information technology. A. Manufacturing and service technologies. Manufacturing is a form of business that combines and transforms resources into tangible outcomes that are then sold to others. Manufacturing was once the dominant technology in the United States. During the 1970s, manufacturing entered the long period of decline, primarily because of foreign competition. Over the last decade or so U.S. manufacturing has regained a competitive position in many different industries. During the decline of the manufacturing sector, a tremendous growth in the service sector kept the overall U.S. economy from declining at the same rate. The service organization is one that transforms resources into an intangible output and creates time or place utility for its customers. Moreover, employment in service occupations is expected to grow 20.9% between 2012 and 2022. Managers have come to see that many of the tools, techniques, and methods that are used in a factory are also useful to a service firm. At the same time, though, service-based firms must Hire and train employees based on a different skill set than is required by most manufacturers. B. Technology and Competition Technology is the basis of competition for some firms, especially those whose goals include being the technology leaders in their industries. But because of the rapid pace of new developments, keeping the leadership position based on technology was becoming increasingly challenging. Businesses have increasingly found that they can be more competitive if they can systematically decrease cycle times the time that it takes a firm to accomplish some recurring activity or function from beginning to end. Twenty years ago, it took a car maker about five years from the decision to launch a new product until it was available in dealers' showrooms. Now most companies can complete the cycle in less than two years. The speedier process allows them to more quickly respond to changing economic conditions, consumer preferences, and new competitor products while recouping their product development costs faster. See Information Technology
Most people are very familiar with the swift advances in information technology. Breakthroughs in information technology have resulted in leaner organizations, more flexible operations, increased collaboration among employees, more flexible work sites, and improved management processes and systems. On the other hand, they have also resulted in less personal communication, less off downtime divided by for managers and employees, and an increased sense of urgency this a this decision making and communication the changes that have not necessarily always been beneficial. The ethics and corporate governance. Ethics and related issues have also engendered renewed interest in recent years. One special aspect of business ethics, corporate governance, has also taken on increased importance. Ethics also increasingly relate to information technology. They framing ethical issues. Figure 2.3 illustrates how many ethical situations can be framed. Specifically, most ethical dilemmas faced by managers relate to how the organization treats its employees, how employees treat the organization, and how employees and organizations treat other economic agents. 1. How an organization treats its employees. This area includes policies such as hiring and firing, wages and working conditions, and employee privacy and respect. Wages and working conditions, although tightly regulated, are also areas for potential controversy. The same goes for employee benefits, especially if an organization takes action that affects the compensation packages and welfare of an entire workforce or segment of it. Finally, most observers would also agree that an organization is obligated to protect the privacy of its employees. 2. How employees treat the organization. Numerous ethical issues also stem from how employees treat the organization, especially in regard to conflicts of interest, secrecy and confidentiality, and honesty. A conflict of interest occurs when a decision potentially benefits the individual to the possible detriment of the organization. Divulging company secrets is also clearly unethical. A third area of concern is honesty in general. Relatively common problems in this area include such activities as using a business telephone to make personal calls, stealing supplies, and padding expense accounts. In recent years, new issues regarding such behaviors as personal internet use at work have also become more pervasive. Another disturbing trend is that more workers are calling in sick simply to get extra time off. Although most employees are basically honest, organizations must nevertheless be vigilant to avoid problems resulting from such behaviors. 3. How employees and the organization treat other economic agents. Managerial ethics also come into play in the relationship between the firm and its employees with other economic agents. The primary agents of interest include customers, competitors, stockholders, suppliers, dealers, and unions. The interactions between the organization and these agents that may be subject to ethical ambiguity include advertising and promotions, financial disclosures, ordering and purchasing, shipping and solicitations, bargaining and negotiation, and other business relationships. Another area of concern in recent years involves financial reporting by some e-commerce firms. In at least a few cases, some firms have substantially overstated their earnings projections to entice more investment. Additional complexities faced by many firms today include the variations in ethical business practices in different countries. In some countries, bribes and side payments are a normal and customary part of doing business. However, U.S. laws forbid these practices. Even if a firm's rivals from other countries are paying them, the ethical issues in corporate governance. The related area of emerging concern relates to ethical issues in corporate governance of the oversight of a public corporation by its board of directors. The board of a public corporation is expected to ensure that the business is being properly managed and that the decisions made by its senior management are in the best interests of shareholders and other stakeholders. But in far too many cases the recent ethical scandals alluded to previously have actually started with a breakdown in the corporate governance structure. Boards of directors are also increasingly being criticized even when they are not directly implicated in wrongdoing. The biggest complaint here often relates to board independence. 
privacy and ethical issues and information technology. Another set of issues that have emerged in recent times involves information technology. Among the specific questions in this area are individual rights to privacy and the potential abuse of information technology by companies. One way management can address these concerns is by posting a privacy policy on its website. The policy should explain exactly what data the company collects and who gets to see the data. It should also allow people a choice about having their information shared with others and indicate how people can opt out of data collection. In addition, companies can offer web surfers the opportunity to review and correct information that has been collected, especially medical and financial data. Despite the technical difficulties, government agencies are already working on Internet privacy guidelines. This means, in turn, that companies will also need internal guidelines, training, and leadership to ensure compliance. D. Social responsibility. The related business challenge relevant to OP is adopting a broader stakeholder perspective and looking beyond shareholder value or the short-term stock price. In general, this view is called social responsibility. Definitions of corporate social responsibility often include businesses living and working together for the common good and valuing human dignity. An important part of this is how employers treat their employees. Is it really the responsibility of businesses to be good citizens? Doing so can help a firm attract the best talent, and customers are increasingly favoring companies that do the right thing. Although most agree with their importance in principle, some people still believe that managers should focus solely on stockholders' interests. Others argue that because business is an influential element of society, it has an obligation to solve problems of public concern, that it is in the enlightened self-interest of organizations to be socially responsible. To have lasting effects, social responsibility efforts should be integrated into the culture of the organization. Corporate sustainability initiatives can be top-down, with someone in a position of authority dictating to managers and employees what to do. Corporate sustainability efforts can also be grassroots, with employees identifying projects and taking the initiative to organize their own activities. The International Organization for Standardization ISO has created a variety of standards that help organizations gain international acceptance of their practices and outcomes. In addition to environmentally related standards such as sustainability and carbon emissions, the ISO Publicies management standards including those for leadership, customer focus, involvement of people, and continual improvement. The I. New employment relationships. The final significant area of environmental change that is particularly relevant for businesses today involves what we call new employment relationships. Two particularly important areas today involve the management of knowledge workers and the outsourcing of jobs to other businesses especially when those businesses are in other countries. Managing temporary and contingency workers and tiered workforces is also becoming increasingly complex. The nature of psychological contracts is also changing. 8. The management of knowledge workers. Traditionally, employees added value to organizations because of what they did or because of their experience. However, during today's information age divided by many employees add value simply because of what they know. These employees are often referred to as knowledge workers. As the importance of information-driven jobs grows, the need for knowledge workers will grow as well. However, these employees require extensive and highly specialized training, and not everyone is willing to make the human capital investments necessary to move into these jobs. Compensation and related policies for knowledge workers must also be specially tailored the outsourcing and offshoring. Outsourcing is the practice of hiring other firms to do work previously performed by the organization itself. When this work is moved overseas, it is often called offshoring. It is an increasingly popular strategy because it helps firms focus on their core activities and avoid getting sidetracked by secondary activities. Firms today often outsource numerous activities, including payroll, employee training, facility maintenance and research and development. Up to a point, at least, outsourcing makes good business sense in areas that are highly unrelated to a firm's core business activities. However, what has attracted considerably more attention in 
Recent years is the growing trend toward outsourcing abroad in order to lower labor costs. This practice is often called offshoring. See temp and contingency workers. Another trend that has impacted employment relationships in business involves the use of contingent or temporary workers. A contingent worker is a person who works for an organization on something other than a permanent or full-time basis. Categories of contingent workers include independent contractors, on-call workers, temporary employees usually hired through outside agencies and contract, and leased employees. Another category is part-time workers. Managing contingent workers is not always straightforward, however, especially from a behavioral perspective. Expecting too much from such workers, for example, is a mistake that manager should avoid. Managers must understand that they need to develop a strategy for integrating contingent workers according to some sound logic and then follow that strategy consistently over time. D tier workforce. Yet another emerging issue in new employment relationships is what we call the tiered workforce. The tiered workforce exists when one group of an organization's workforce has a contractual arrangement with the organization objectively different from that of another group. Performing the same jobs. These and similar arrangements, of course, may pose new challenges in the future. For instance, recently hired workers may come to feel resentment towards their more senior colleagues who are getting paid more for the same work. Likewise, as the job market improves and workers have more options, firms may face higher turnover among their newer lower paid employees. E the changing nature of psychological contracts. The final element of the business environment that both affects and is affected by employment relationships such as those discussed above is the psychological contract. The psychological contract is a person's overall set of expectations regarding what he or she will contribute to the organization and what the organization will provide in return. The individual makes a variety of contributions to the organization be such things as effort, skills, ability, time, and loyalty. In return for these contributions, the organization provides inducements to the individual. Some inducements, such as pay and career opportunities, are tangible rewards. Others, such as job security and status, are more intangible. If either party sees an inequity in the contract, that party may initiate a change. The employee might ask for a pay raise or promotion, put forth less effort, or look for a better job elsewhere. The organization can also initiate change by training the worker to improve his skills, by transferring him to another job, or by firing him. All organizations face the basic challenge of managing psychological contracts. They want value from their employees, and they need to give employees the right inducements. Recent trends in downsizing and cutbacks have complicated the process of managing psychological contracts, especially during the recession of 2008-2010. Increased globalization of business also complicates the management of psychological contracts. The related problem faced by international businesses is the management of psychological contracts for expatriate managers. In some ways, this process is more like a formal contract than our other employment relationships. Summary and Application Diversity is much more than demographics and can reflect combinations of characteristics in addition to a single attribute. There are many types of diversity, including surface level and deep level diversity. Diversity affects individual and organizational outcomes through processes including social integration, differences in status and power, task conflict, relationship conflict, inclusion, and information processing. Barriers to inclusion include the all like me divided by bias, stereotypes, prejudice, perceptions of loss by persons who feel threatened by diversity initiatives ethnocentrism, and unequal access to organizational networks. Organizations promote diversity through top management commitment, staffing, training, and mentoring. Because societal culture influences the diverse values, customs, language, and expectations we bring with us to work, it is important to understand its effects on our own as well as on other people's behaviors. Societal cultures can differ on a variety of characteristics including collectivism, power distance, future orientation, and gender egalitarianism as well as determine what employees consider desirable leadership 
characteristics. Globalization is playing a major role in the environment of many firms today. The volume of international trade has grown significantly and continues to grow at a very rapid pace. There are numerous cross-cultural differences and similarities that affect behavior within organizations. Technological change has become a major driver for other forms of organizational change. It also has widespread effects on the behaviors of people inside an organization. Although ethics has long been relevant to businesses and managers, one special aspect of business ethics, corporate governance, has also taken on increased importance. Ethics also increasingly relate to information technology. The final significant area of organizational change facing organizations today involves new employment relationships. How well these employees are managed is seen as a major factor in determining which firms will succeed. Outsourcing is the practice of hiring other firms to do the work previously performed by the organization itself. Contingent and temporary workers and the creation of a tiered workforce also pose special challenges. Discussion questions 1. Which do you think is more important to team performance, surface level or deep level? Diversity Why? Surface level diversity refers to observable differences in people, including race, age, ethnicity, physical abilities, physical characteristics, and gender. Deep level diversity is more important to team performance because it includes goals, values, decision-making styles, knowledge, skills, abilities, and attitudes. These dimensions directly affect team performance. 2. How can diversity create a competitive advantage for a firm? Diversity can enhance a firm's competitive advantage because it enables all employees to contribute their full talents and motivation to the company. Effectively managing diversity brings out the best in their employees, allowing them to contribute maximally to the firm's performance. Diversity can improve decision-making, enhance creativity, and enable a company to better relate and respond to its customers. 3. If a subordinate came to you and said that they felt the company's new diversity hiring initiative was unfair and would compromise their well-deserved opportunities for advancement, how would you respond? I would say that the company makes sure that highly qualified job candidates are diverse. Then, I would point out that the company focuses on being a meritocracy, promotes awareness of how different groups communicate, and ensures that the assessment and promotion process does not misinterpret those styles. Finally, I would add that the company ensures that the promotion process proactively identifies diverse candidates to prevent inadvertently overlooking them. For what can leaders do to be effective when team members are from different cultures and have different expectations about how the leaders should behave? Leaders can develop cultural awareness. This requires honestly examining their prejudices and biases actively developing cross-cultural skills, learning from role models, and having a positive attitude about cultural issues. The key to cross-cultural success is awareness. The leader must be aware of how culture influences his or her interpretations of others, his or her behavior, and how people from other cultures see the leader. 5. Identify at least three ways in which the globalization of business affects businesses in your community. Students probably will recognize that international business affects almost every aspect of business in every community. Within the work sphere, it influences product design, distribution, market, segmentation, promotion, and pricing. At a higher level, it influences corporate objectives, policies, and strategies. Like it or not, every business is in the international marketplace. Six. What roles do changing technologies play in your daily activities? Communication is faster, easier, and a wide range of options is available. Privacy may be encroached upon with greater ease than ever. Unit costs of communication are lower. Entertainment is also more varied in terms for format and accessibility, increasing a person's options. It may be more of a challenge to keep pace with the rapid changes in technology in the consumer products field as well as work-related technology, and the problem and pace of obsolescence are accelerating. 7. Do you think that concerns regarding ethics will become more or less important in business? Why? 
concerns about effects will likely remain fresh in the minds of current managers and business students, perhaps fading in future generations, especially if other issues, such as a shrinking workforce or global catastrophes, emerge. As long as business schools and organizations themselves make an effort to remind the young about ethical issues they will remain important, if not central, to managerial thinking. 8. What are your personal opinions about international outsourcing in the garment industry? Do you think that lower prices are worth sending U.S. jobs to other countries? Explain your answer. If one has never lost one's job due to international outsourcing the opinion might be very positive that can reduce labor costs, make the organization more efficient and competitive, and help develop economies that are below part. There are downsides, of course, particularly revolving around the short-term effects on individual American workers and the communities in which they live from a sudden loss of jobs. Longer term, downsizing can force individuals and organizations alike to learn new skills, streamline their operations, and a change for the better. Group exercise v. What does culture mean to you? Learning objective, explain how a societal culture affects how people interpret others and how others interpret them. Summary. This exercise is done as a class, and the instructor plays a role of class secretary. First, working alone, students think about what associational culture divided by means. For five minutes, they think about their own culture. They define the word and then write down the cultural dimensions to describe it. After five minutes, students share their ideas, which the instructor records. Students identify categories for placing the ideas. They then answer the following question as a class task. 1. How might multiculturalism create a competitive advantage for an organization? 2. What categories are the most important to teams working in organizations? 3. What categories are the least important to teams working in organizations? 4. What does your list suggest that managers wanting to promote a multicultural workplace might do? Video exercise. Ethical Decision Making at Black Diamond Equipment Summary Black Diamond Equipment specializes in climbing and skiing equipment. The global company looks for employees who share the company's attitude, values, and passion toward outdoor sports and ethical values. Black Diamond also promotes fair labor practices, sustainability, and low environmental impact. Task As a class Watch a black diamond equipment divided by and then individually consider the following questions. After you have come up with your own ideas, form groups of four to five people and discuss your insights. Be sure to nominate someone to serve as a spokesperson to share your ideas with the class. 1. How does Black Diamond integrate social responsibility into its culture? The founders of Black Diamond began a culture of respect for people and the earth early in the process of beginning the business. Social responsibility is fully integrated into Black Diamond's business priorities, relevant to achieving business objectives, inclusive of both internal and external stakeholder needs, and consistent with the firm's cultural values and brand identity. Black Diamond respects its employees and has a passion for outdoor extreme sports. The company attracts employees who have the same values. 2. How does the global nature of the company and its markets influence how it thinks about employee diversity? Black Diamond naturally has to take a global view of its market in order to have a viable market size. Selling to customers in one country would not be enough. Black Diamond needs that conglomerate market in order to be a truly global company and not just a company that sells globally. The management team is a collection of individuals from different countries. This group is integrated into decision-making and product development. This keeps the needs of various cultures at the focus of developing products. Black Diamond would lose these global perspectives if they had the management team comprised of individuals from one country. 3. How would you describe Black Diamond's ethics in terms of how it treats its employees at the company's factory partners in Vietnam, China, and Bangladesh? Do you think that it is appropriate for firms like Black Diamond to scrutinize its partner factories like this. Why or why not?
Black Diamond holds high ethical standards for the treatment of its employees in the company's factory partners. Black Diamond runs a certification program for these factories who must pass certain basic needs such as a ventilated and well-lit factory. The company also offers English language programs, extra money for education, and more importantly, human respect. Students Answers may vary on if they feel scrutiny is important. I feel scrutiny is important and it must be a continuous process, not a one-time inspection. The responsibility for how the company treats employees rests ultimately with top management. Control measures such as the certification process is one way for owners to know their partners share their values. Now what? Imagine trying to write the project status report for Happy Time Toys with three other team members when an older team member tries to take the project over, believing that you're too inexperienced to do a good job. What do you say or do? Go to this chapter's own know what question mark divided by video, watch the challenge video, and choose the response. Be sure to also view the outcomes of the two responses you didn't choose. Will be concepts applied, surface level diversity, relational demography, managing age in the workplace. Effects of age differences that violate social status norms, diversity as a source of competitive advantage, relationship conflict, inclusion, information, processing, social categorization theory, stereotypes, culture of inclusion. Discussion questions. 1. What type S of barriers to inclusion exist for this group? Relational demography refers to a group member's similarities to and differences from other group members. Bill is older and more experienced than Allison and Alex and perceives himself to be different from them. This awareness leads to a haughty attitude. So I know a lot more than you do. And I've written many of these of you kids can get back to your regular work. Divided by in fact, Bill feels like the token because he is in the numerical minority in a group based on the characteristic of age. The group is experiencing task conflict which refers to conflict over issues, such as deadlines and work processes. Educational diversity is associated with greater task conflict in correct response number one. Bill feels that his experience gives him superior skills in writing reports. I've written many of these they all have no problem getting it done. Divided by Alex and Allison feel more qualified to write the report and try to exclude Bill. O came out of the best universities and have more current knowledge than you do. Divided by other sources of conflict include both surface level diversity, visible differences in people, including age and deep level diversity, and visible differences such as knowledge. Bill is much older than Alex and Allison, but they have greater expertise in marketing and sales. 2. How can diversity be leveraged as a source of competitive advantage for this group? Diversity can be a source of competitive advantage because group members can use their diverse backgrounds to develop a more comprehensive view of a problem, create a broader list of possible solutions, and offer a wider variety of information and expertise. Alex suggests that the group divides up the report based on each member's area of expertise. Allison drafts the sales section, Alex drafts the marketing and financial sections, and Bill handles competitor analysis. Research shows that innovative companies intentionally use heterogeneous teams to solve problems. 3. If you were the CEO of Happy Time Toys, how would you create a culture of inclusion to help your company realize the benefits of not only age-related diversity but all types of diversity? If diverse employees are excluded from decision-making or are marginalized in correct response number 2, their potential contributions are not realized. Alex says to Bill, you do have more experience than we do writing this report. It probably will be better if you write it. Divided by, however, Bill didn't have a good mastery of the marketing plan and couldn't finish the report on time. As a result, all three group members received disappointing performance evaluations because the report was supposed to be a team effort. Inclusion refers to the sense of being safe, valued, and engaged in a group regardless of differences from other group members. To create a culture of inclusion, Happy Time Toys should highlight the strengths of each employee through increased involvement. Alex could further develop marketing and financial expertise through seminars, continuing education and challenging assignments. 
it is essential that the company avoid barriers to inclusion such as stereotyping others based on age. Bill thought Alex and Allison were old kids divided by who didn't know anything. Alex and Allison thought Bill's knowledge was dated because they perceived him as an old person. Stereotypes are both negative and erroneous. As new graduates from the best universities, Alex and Allison knew more than Bill about marketing, finance, and sales, but Bill knew more about writing the report. Happy Time Toys should also avoid the barrier to inclusion called a perceived threat of loss. Divided by since Bill has been the predominant employee for years, he feels angry if he perceives that younger employees pose a direct threat to his career opportunities. He wanted to do right the report himself because he felt the need to protect his career by impeding the careers of Alex and Allison. Incorrect response number one. Ultimately, the three employees collaborated on the report and achieved inclusiveness.